Please pray with me. Oh, gracious God, we thank and praise you for the gift of Jesus. You are such a generous God, and you've given to us a gift that is inexpressible, and yet you've asked us to express it, even as the shepherds. So today, Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, invite us into your word, and inspire our hearts to give our gifts to you to be one of the generous voices of this holiday season, sharing the message of Jesus. In his precious name we pray, amen. Well, we're continuing the season of giving, looking at this pre-Christmas time as a way that people are are really reaching out and and sharing their generosity. Uh, We're inspired by that simply by going shopping and seeing um, red kettles and and people looking for ways to help those who are less fortunate. It brings out a generous spirit in God's people and others as well. Today we're gonna be looking at the shepherds and we're gonna hear what the shepherds heard Well, actually, the shepherds also watched a lot. They watched. That was their job. And they heard. They watched and they heard, and then they acted on the things that caught their attention. This pre-Christmas season, where there is so much giving and so much generosity, I've been trying to point out for you these Voices of generosity in the Christmas story. These are willing participants who entered into the story of God and they didn't, they didn't shrink back from being part of that story. They didn't say, not me, not, not now, I can't. A lot of times when people look at giving and stewardship, they come up with those reasons and those things. They say, well, I can't right now, or sorry, not me. Last week, the theme was Mary answered. And in the Christmas story, Mary gives three answers, and with each answer she gave, the story of God just got bigger and bigger and bigger. That's because she offered herself as a willing participant in the story of God. In the first sermon, I introduced you to the angel and what the angel said. And there it was that we met the shepherds that very first time. The angel said, do not be afraid. I have good news. Do not be afraid. It's important that when we think about giving, when we think about the generosity in our hearts and in our lives that we express to God our our thankfulness and our generosity without fear, but with faith. Let's talk about the shepherds. They watched. Like I said before, that was their job. They watched a lot of sheep. But you know, these weren't just your ordinary sheep outside of Bethlehem. They were very precious lambs. For those of you who maybe heard this last year when I talked about the shepherds, they were watching a flock that was located outside of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was only six miles from Jerusalem, and in that intervening countryside, the shepherds there were often raising the temple lambs. These are the lambs that were being born at that time of the year when the shepherds were not in the stables. The shepherds were out in the fields where the sheep were dropping lambs, were giving birth to lambs. Do you see what's happening here? The shepherds were out in the fields watching their flocks, watching the very lambs that would offer their lives for the sins of the people. They watched. And they heard. They probably didn't hear much. In fact, it was probably pretty boring, the stuff that they had to listen to. A few sheep making sheep noises. The internet um, has shown some sheeps that scream. That's kind of cool, but not at night. (laughs) 
They were listening to the fire crackle. They were listening to just the quiet sounds of nature, maybe the wind blowing. Usually, they were watching and listening for threats, anything that would threaten these precious lambs. That night, they watched and they heard. Verse 9 of of Luke chapter 2 tells us that suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Imagine seeing that in the darkness of the night. I don't know what glory looks like, but I kind of imagine that it's very bright and very surprising and very shocking. I can imagine that as the scripture says in verse 9, they were terrified. But then they heard that word from the angel calling them to do not be afraid. Not fear, but faith gets them to start listening. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The shepherds heard. And you know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17 is absolutely true. Faith comes from hearing. They heard the gospel message very clearly from the angel. A savior has been born. Faith is ignited when we hear the gospel. And you know, I want to point out to you that they heard three times. They had a triple personal message for them. The word you. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Only the shepherds heard it so far as we know that night. The shepherds heard it. It was personal for them. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That Savior is a personal Savior, a Savior given to you, shepherds. (laughs) I want you to hear that Christmas story being very personal again, just like it was for Mary last week. The third thing, a very personal sign is given. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Isn't that spectacular? The generosity of God toward these shepherds who probably had nothing, was very personal, inviting them into the story of God. But you know, these shepherds heard even more, and I think this is what we need to hear as well. They heard that this good news was for all people. So it was very personally delivered to them, but they heard quite clearly that this good news is for everyone, all people. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Again, They heard and saw even more glory, more angels, more worship, and they acted. They were so inspired by what had been given to them that it says, beginning in verse 15, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. See, they acted right away. The fear was gone. It was replaced by faith because they had heard the good news that a Savior had come. And they went with haste, it says. 
verse 16. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. They found him. That's part of the story that they participated in. They found him. Just like by God's grace, you and I have found him. In, in many ways, as we encounter the scriptures, as we, as we share together our faith and our love for God, we found the greatest gift we could ever find in Jesus. Because God invites us into the story. You and I can't even believe without hearing from God, without his Holy Spirit working in us that faith to know and trust in our Savior. But the shepherd's part of the story still isn't over. They were personally invited into the story. They were personally given a sign. The wise men weren't given the the swaddling cloths thing. They followed a star, but these shepherds had a personal signal that they would know Jesus when they saw him. They found him, and they spoke. Now when they had seen him, verse 17, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Brothers and sisters, When we talk about stewardship in the church, we we so often talk of time, talents, and treasures, and we talk about the faithful use of the gifts God has given us. But I wanna tell you today that it's not dollars and signs, it's not even talents and gifts, it's not even the time that you offer that's the greatest gift. It's that you will speak. How will they hear if no one speaks? How will they hear if no one is sent? The greatest, most valuable resource in the church are people who are willing to tell other people what they've seen and heard from God. This is a very fine facility. I've always been impressed with our Savior Lutheran Church, always. Great gymnasium, great facilities, wonderful, beautiful sanctuary. This is great. It's a wonderful resource. It seems as hard as it is sometimes that we eventually get all our bills paid. People are generous in this church. Those are great resources. There are talented people There are people who devote many hours of volunteer work and service, but still the greatest, most valuable resource is someone who's willing to tell another person what they have seen and heard from God. Remember, brothers and sisters, that God is in this story of Christmas. Remember that God is in your story and you're in his story. And I believe that God is calling you and me right now to authentic generosity. Remember that definition? The quality of being kind, understanding, not selfish. I think the shepherds got it that night. They heard how special they were to hear the good news. They heard how special they were to have a sign. But they heard quite clearly that this is for all people. My question for you is how will you personally get involved in the story? How will you, like last week, make God's story bigger by the things you contribute? How will you make God's story known by the things you say? 
each of us has a personal hope, a personal salvation. Unto you is born a Savior. But you need to hear that he's for all the people. How will you make that happen? Every year, every year, this congregation has mailed out a commitment card. You probably got it this past week, right? I think most of you did. A commitment card. It's used for planning and budgeting, trying to figure out what we can do with the financial resources we have. It calls for us to make a commitment. And I know that the traditional thing is to think of our time and our talents and our treasures. Today I want to think about our telling other people. Not just around us, but around the world. And that's why a commitment to a church congregation and to the mission work of the church is so important. This message is for everyone, for the whole world to hear. And we, like a band of shepherds, do it together. So the commitment card goes out usually a little earlier than this time of year, but it goes out to ask, how deeply into this story are you? Truly, if you have nothing to give in the way of money, we don't want it anyhow. You hear that? If you are like the shepherds with nothing, will you tell the world about Jesus? Next week, we're not going to hear about people that didn't have anything. We're going to hear about people from an area kind of like Excelsior that had resources. They're called the Magi. We're going to hear what they asked and why they asked because they didn't just ask about Jesus one time. They were searching. And they knew when they found this king, they would offer him wonderful things. They would worship him. So over this next week, you'll have your commitment card sitting at home on your dresser, on your kitchen table. I don't know. But next week, we're going to have the opportunity to present those as we hear the story of the Magi offering their gifts. It's a time of the year when voices of generosity really do ring out the time of the year when people are thinking about giving, about year-end giving and those kind of things. But again, let me make it perfectly clear, the most valuable resource of this church is you and how God uses you. Listen to him. Listen to the angels say, do not fear. Listen the voice of God's word that says comfort, comfort my people says your God it's a big day next week we call it commitment Sunday we call it installation Sunday we call it a lot of things please show up please be here morning, noon and night (laughs) please be here to celebrate what God has given us and what we are giving him. I look forward to that next week. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, those shepherds had nothing. They were watching lambs being born. It was that time of the year when the fields were full of of ewes giving birth to little lambs, some destined for the altars, of the temple. You invited them into the story to see the real Lamb of God. 
You gave them the hopeful good news that a Savior was born. And though they had nothing in the way of resources, they were overjoyed to see that what had been given to them was absolutely true. They saw the baby. They knew the sign. And they told others what they had seen and heard. It was just like you told it to them. May we also enter into your story willing to share ourselves, our story, our time, our treasures, our talents. And may we honor you and worship you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.